Hello! Welcome to episode 13 of an ongoing series where we basically take the camera anywhere we want in hopes of finding secrets and discoveries to some of our favorite games that we've never seen before. So, let's get started. Okay, we begin this episode where the game begins with Link riding a pony through the mysterious woods. Ooh. Well, you know what? Let it be a mystery no more. I realized that some scenes would look a little bit weird without some context, so I decided to put the original video in the corner down below. So how about it? Is there anything cool in this opening cutscene? Yeah, absolutely! Well, first of all, we actually get to see the woods itself, and we can begin to find out that the woods is actually a somewhat large arena. However, even cooler than that is that Majora's Mask is actually hiding underneath the environment. Wait a minute, but where? All the way over here. Yep, you gotta keep an eye out for tiny little specks because it can be something pretty phenomenal. So you know that scene where Link falls down the giant hole and he clearly should have met the big croak in the sky, but instead he has that weird psychedelic scene from Dumbo? <laughs> it's so weird. It's like this... It's accurate, but it's such a weird explanation. Anyway, what if I told you that instead of those little weird shapes and stuff disappearing, Link would only have to travel a little bit ways upward to go back and check them out some more? Whoa! Whoa! This is better than a Zeppelin light show! So now, we're gonna see where Skull Kid goes after he escapes from Link. Well, you might be a little disappointed to find out that he just, blip, disappears. But where we're met with one little disappointment, we are left with one pretty interesting reveal. Tail is actually sticking around in hopes that Tattle will get through the door. It's, it's so sad. So where are we now? We're inside the potion shop. But why are we in the potion shop? Well, that's a great question. Do you remember this witch from Ocarina of Time? You may recall that this witch was rather short in that game. Yet here in this potion shop, she towers above you quite well, doesn't she? Wonder how she pulls that off. Oh, she's, <laughs> she's standing on a box. And not just any box, it's a box full of oranges. And I ran over this game with a fine tooth comb, and this box is nowhere else in the game. Alright, there's something particularly odd about the iron knuckle. So what's your gut telling you? That there's someone underneath that armor? Well, it's a good thing you went with your gut, because you are exactly right. So once we get past the helmet armor of the iron knuckle, we come to find that it's Naboru. Is it, is it pronounced Naboru? I hope so. But what's Naboru doing in this game? My guess is that they reused the Iron Knuckle from Ocarina of Time and didn't bother to throw out the model that's underneath the Iron Knuckle helmet, hence Naboru is in this game. Now it makes me wonder if she's in the Ocarina of Time one too. Well, we're not doing that episode, so I guess we'll find out another time. Now it's a little bit hard to see because the camera is zoomed in so far. However, upon close examination, Naboru is actually wearing a chainmail coif. Is it pronounced a coif? Ooh, I am just all about my pronunciation today. Yeah, hopefully I got it right. Anyway, she's wearing a chainmail coif, and the model seems to go all the way down to her chest area. So just think about it. Every time you kill an Iron Knuckle in Majora's Mask, you're actually killing Naboru. Poor girl, she just doesn't get a break. Okay, so this one's a little bit strange. When I was trying to get to the top of Zoro's Domain, I fell through it, and once I got to the bottom where the water is, there are red tiles scattered all about. Why are there red tiles? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest. I checked the internet to see if this was discovered already, and actually it was, and it's theorized that these were used to measure distance. One of the tiles actually has a texture to it, which is kind of strange. It almost looks like, and I know it's not, but it kind of looks like the red rug from Super Mario 64. You know, now you might have seen this on your own, but I've played Majora's Mask a couple times in the past and I've never noticed this. If you go behind the old lady's wheelchair, you'll find a tiger print on the back. You know, I never noticed it before, but the spikes and the tiger print. This old lady is, uh, well, maybe a tinge on the evil side. So people have theorized that these kids running around in the moon, uh, the moon field? are incarnations of the Happy Mask Salesman. And let's be honest here, they're probably right. But you never get to see beyond the mask. And, well, 
Should we just confirm whether or not the happy mask salesman's face is behind those masks? Well, let's find out. And, uh, no, uh, looks like the developers just knew that no one was going to see the faces and just left it completely blank. So right now you're looking at the end of the game. The Giants did their job. They're ready to go home. Skull Kid's crying like a little baby. And if we move the camera around, we can actually see that somebody's hiding off camera. Who is it, you might ask? Well, it's the happy mask salesman. And he's in his little bowing pose. Oh, whoa, what? And also in another scene, I found him underground. He would just teleport all around, wouldn't he? It seems to be his thing, right? Just immediately changing expressions, immediately warping himself into places. What a creep. So those great fairies at the end of the game, they're all lined up, they're all admiring, but who are they admiring? Well, it's none other than Link himself. Seriously, where are they supposed to be right now? <laughs> hey Link, well, uh, thanks for showing up to the Black Void there, buddy. Normally in this scene, the two skulls of the Igana servants are arguing amongst each other as floating heads. However, if we go above the room, we can see that Igasdu Ikana is hanging out with all of his servants and just chilling, and they're even weaving their hips to the song! Mm. Okay, now here's another oddity that's just in plain sight. Do you see that little weird gray lump on the ground there? What is that supposed to be? Well, believe it or not, it's an upside down dog. It's an upside down dog, what? And if we take the camera, yeah, you can see the whole dog. It's it, it's so bizarre. And what's weird is that they actually fixed this in Majora's Mask 3DS, but it's still a completely frozen dog. Oh, it's so strange, so, so strange. So we'll end this episode with my favorite Zelda boss of all time, the Garo Master. I've always thought this guy was so cool and mysterious. He's got the flaming sabers, you can't see what his face looks like. He clearly has a body, but you can't see his body. Ah, oh, up until now. So when we zoom the camera in on the Garo Master, you can see that his body is metallic looking. In fact, his shins have almost like a girder-like appearance to them, but his body is small and pudgy. And as you can see, he doesn't have any arms, and that's, there's probably a good reason for that. It's probably only because if he did have arms, it'd be very likely for them to clip through his little cowl, and so they left it out. But I think it's really cool that he still has his torso, because that is definitely something you wouldn't expect for them to leave in the game. Uh, got a little bit of news. Uh, you... News is Grumpy Derek. Lines right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I've got a little bit of news. Uh, I'm going to be starting uh, live streams starting on Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to be using these live streams to actually collect the footage for future episodes. So if you ever wanted to see my live reaction to these discoveries in real time, we now have an opportunity for it. If you're not into live streams, don't worry about it. We're not going to infect the, uh, the subscription box with you know, the, the, all the crap that comes with live streams. It's going to be exclusive to Twitch, and this is the only announcement we're ever going to make for it. So tell your friends. And a little bit of a shout out. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to Go Nintendo for featuring my last video. That was incredible. And I'm sure Zelda Informer is going to feature this video because they're incredibly nice people. So, hey guys, how's it going? I hope you enjoyed the, the episode. <laughs> all right. Well, that's it. Uh, I'm ready to do the next episode. I haven't decided which games are going to be, but there will be a poll for them down below. So if you want to decide on them, go for it. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. Boom, boom, boom. I think that was good. Ba -da -ba -ba -da -da. Ah!